This unit is about fluids. We will first study fluids at rest and then flowing fluids. Before we start, we will go over a few basic terms. Density. The definition for density is mass per volume. In chemistry, you probably use the D for density, but in physics, we use rho, the Greek letter rho for density. It has a, a rounded top like this. Sort of looks like a P, but it is very important that you make it so it does not look like a P at all because we will be using P for pressure and sometimes the density rho and the pressure P even show up in the same equation. So you will want to make them look distinctively different in order to not mix them up. Density is mass divided by volume and we use uh, M for mass and the capital V for volume. What do you think the standard unit is for density? The standard unit for mass is kilograms. The standard unit for volume is meters cubed. So it is kilograms per meter cubed. Another term that is very similar to density is the specific gravity, Sg. The specific gravity of a substance is the density of the substance divided by the density of water at 4 degrees Celsius and under one atmosphere of pressure. What do you think is the unit for specific gravity? There is no unit. It is a density divided by density, so the units of density cancel. Specific gravity is just a ratio of the two densities. A specific gravity of 7 means the substance is 7 times as dense as water at 4 degrees Celsius. Why 4 degrees Celsius? 4 degrees Celsius is special because that is when water is the densest. Normal substance expands when the temperature goes up and contracts when the temperature goes down. However, water behaves anomalously below 4 degrees Celsius. When we cool water from, say, 100 degrees Celsius, water would contract and become denser until it cools down to 4 degrees Celsius. When water gets colder than 4 degrees Celsius, it actually expands as it gets colder to 0 degrees Celsius. And expands even more when it freezes into ice and then only contracts very slightly when the temperature of ice goes down. That's why when you put ice cubes into your glass of room temperature water, the colder ice cubes would float. The colder ice is not as dense as uh, the warmer water, and in a way, we're very lucky that water has this anomalous behavior. Let's look at a lake. When winter comes, the water cools down and the colder water is denser and sinks down until it cools to 4 degrees Celsius. The 4 degrees Celsius water is the densest. So when water gets even colder to 3, 2, or 0 degrees Celsius, it is not as dense as the 4 degrees Celsius water, so the 0 degree water will go to the top. That's why when a lake freezes, the ice starts forming on the surface. When it gets even colder, the ice gets thicker, providing a better thermal insulator than water. So at the bottom of the lake, it can still be a toasty 4 degrees Celsius, so marine life can still go on and not become frozen. When spring comes, it is easy for the surface ice to melt and warm up. Of course, there are also downsides for this anomalous behavior of water. For example, if you live in a cold enough region, in the winter time, water can seep into cracks in the road during the day. This water can then freeze and uh, expand at night, breaking the road even more. That's why after a really wet and cold winter, you can find lots of potholes on the road. Now let's look at the density of water. 
You may remember it from your chemistry class that the density of water is one gram per centimeter cubed, or one gram per milliliter. In physics, we can also use these units, but sometimes we need it to be in the standard unit, kilograms per meter cubed. How many kilograms per meter cubed is it? To convert this unit, I'm going to first change the grams into kilograms. One gram is 0 0.001 kilograms. And then the centimeter has to become meters, and one centimeter is 0 0.01 meter. And because I have to cube the centimeter, I have to cube this whole thing. So this gives me, the top here is 10 to the negative third. Down here it's 10 to the negative second cubed. So this gives me 10 to the negative 3 divided by 10 to the negative 6, which gives me 10 to the third. So it's 1,000 kilograms per meter cubed. It can be a good idea for you to remember that the density of water is a thousand kilograms per meter cubed. Now let's take a look at over here. This part is 10 to the negative 6, meaning one cubic meter is 10 to the 6 centimeter cubed, which means it is 10 to the 6 milliliters. And the 1,000 milliliters is 1 liter. So this gives me 1,000 liters. Because uh, the density of water is 1,000 kilograms per cubic meter, means 1,000 kilograms per 1,000 liters. That means uh, the density of water is also 1 kilogram per liter. So. This 2 liter bottle holds 2 kilograms of water. 1 cubic meter is 1 meter by 1 meter by 1 meter, which is also 1,000 liters. So 500 bottles of water like this can fill 1 cubic meter. 1 cubic meter of water is 1,000 kilograms, and 1,000 kilograms happens to be 1 metric ton. So if you go to a Chinese restaurant and order a one-ton soup, they really should bring you a filled soup bowl that is one meter by one meter by one meter. Of course, they never give you that much. Now let's look at pressure. We use the uppercase P for pressure. The definition for pressure is force divided by area. Force per area. And we use uh, capital F for force and capital A for area. What do you think is the standard unit for pressure? The standard unit is force, newtons, divided by area, meter squared. So it is uh, newtons per meter squared. We give it a special name and we call it Pascals. In this top view, you can see that I'm squeezing this push pin between my thumb and my index finger. The pin rests on top of a pencil, so I don't have to worry about the weight of the pin. Please compare the following pairs. Which is bigger, the force on my thumb by the pin or the force on my index finger by the pin? Which is bigger, the pressure on my thumb by the pin or the pressure on my index finger by the pin, which hurts more, my thumb or my index finger. Because of Newton's third law, the action force and reaction force, they are equal, so the forces are the same. The pressure, same force, the pin on my thumb has a smaller area, so the pressure on my thumb is much bigger than the pressure on my index finger. 
and of course, my thumb hurts a lot more than the index finger.